Hey there, freaking nerds. So I was watching AMD's launch event for their new RX 9070 graphics cards, and I had a lot of questions about FSR4. To answer a few of them, one of my main questions that I had was, is it gonna be a transformer model like the new recently released DLSS4 is? It's got really great image quality compared to DLSS3, which was using a convolutional neural network model or CNN model. That was a really big upgrade. If we know FSR4 is AI, which we know it is now, is it a transformer model? So I did a lot of research trying to answer that question along with also trying to find everything I can about their neural super sampling and denoising technique that they showed off with their new toy shop demo. So I uh, looked at some of the papers that have come out recently in regards to both technologies. So yeah, I have a lot of info here that I'm going to go over in the video. We already knew FSR4 was going to be AMD's first AI-based upscaler, or in other words, it's going to use machine learning to upscale images instead of what FSR2 and FSR3 did. But that brings up a really big question with the release of DLSS4 and its transformer model. If you watch people's reviews of DLSS4, you'll see them talking about how it's a lot sharper than DLSS3 and how it looks a lot closer to native image quality. And I haven't been able to test it, but everything that I've seen about it looks really great. It looks really excellent. It looks like it reduces ghosting a lot. And like I said, mostly uh, improves sharpness. And so that brings up a big question, is FSR4, since it's a machine learning based upscaler also, is it going to be a transformer model? Traditionally, upscalers like DLSS2 have used convolutional neural networks or CNN models. This includes models like XESS and the PS5 Pro's PSSR upscaling and even DLSS3, so what NVIDIA's state of the art was up until very recently. And CNN models work really well. You know, people really like DLSS and uh, I have really good experience with XDSS. And so going into their launch event, I already had a theory for what I thought FSR4 was going to be. I was, in the beginning, I really assumed it was going to be a transformer model because just because of how common transformer models are nowadays. When DLSS2 came out, transformer models were in their infancy. So it, it wasn't really possible for NVIDIA to use transformer models back then. OpenAI's GPT series of models, uh, which includes their ChatGPT product, those really popularized the use of transformer models for things like large language models. Transformers are really cool, but they require a lot of processing power. They are really intense to run. Now, AMD gave us some clues about what the nature of the FSR4 machine learning model is. They didn't say explicitly whether it was a transformer model or not. Something that caught my attention from AMD's video, though, was when they said, Our new technology leverages a proprietary hybrid model resulting from extensive research across different types and combinations of neural networks and unique training techniques. The crucial piece of info that they gave us there is that it's a hybrid model, and that they're utilizing different types and combinations of neural networks. Now, this heavily implies that FSR4 is a transformer CNN model hybrid. This is because, like I already said, CNN models have been the go-to for upscaling models like DLSS2 and XCSS. And then that transformer models are extremely popular for almost any AI task that people are attempting to solve nowadays. So there's really no architectures that would make sense for AMD to be utilizing or to be talking about when they say it's a hybrid model. Something they also said in the video that caught my attention was, and optimized it for the new FP8 ML acceleration in RDNA4. What this means is that FSR4 utilizes FP8 acceleration in some way that is unique to RDNA4. And here again, they confirmed FSR4 uses a new FP8 data type in the RDNA4 architecture to balance quality and performance. Now I do have some hard evidence for why I'm pretty confident that it's a transformer CNN model hybrid. Because there's been a few papers released recently, like these three that I highlighted here in this document that I wrote up. These three papers are all talking about different ways of solving the same problem. These papers came to the conclusion that you're able to achieve most of the image quality benefits of using a transformer model while maintaining the high speed of CNN models by taking specific ideas from the transformer architecture, but still at its core maintaining the CNN architecture. For this paper, they created what they describe as a transformer style network, but at its core, it's still relying on CNN for the feature extraction and the most of the processing going on. They talk about how you're kind of able to achieve the best of both worlds by combining the strengths of a transformer model with the strengths of a CNN model. CNN models are really great at extracting features and extracting details really efficiently. Transformers are really great for being able to look at pixels that are really far away from each other, either 
in the frame or if it's in a different frame, they're really good at having a really long context and a really complete understanding of the entire frame. Transformers are really great for being able to look at pixels that are not right next to each other. That's what people mean when they say they have global context, is that they're able to look at every pixel in the frame all at once and also previous frames. So that gives it a much more complete understanding of what's actually happening from frame to frame and across the entire image, compared to CNN models, which are only able to look at specific patches at a time. The second paper, I didn't really understand quite as well, but it talks about a similar idea of being inspired by advancements in transformer models and attempting to implement some of those advancements into convolutional neural networks. And here you can see what they're claiming is that they get very similar or even better image quality. Same with down here compared to other upscaling methods, including Swin IR Lite, which to my understanding is a transformer model, but I guess a more lightweight version of a transformer model. Related to FSR4, I thought this paper was the most significant. Here they have a little diagram kind of demonstrating how the basic structure of the network works. This first part here represents their convolutional layers, and it shows them passing that data into a lightweight transformer block that is then looking at all the features and information that the CNN model extracted and looking at it all together before creating the final image. This way it's able to provide some context to the information that the CNN layers extracted and it's able to refine that information to be more cohesive and temporally stable in the case of video games. But yeah, I don't totally understand these papers, obviously, but based on the little that I was able to glean, it seemed, this paper seemed the most related to computer graphics, even though it is talking only about single image super resolution. Whereas FSR4 is a multi-image or a TAA based approach. But yeah, some quotes I got from the paper that I thought were significant talk about how they're adding a lightweight transformer structure to capture this internal and external information as they're calling it. They're saying this lightweight transformer block further extracts features and learns the texture details between the patches through self-attention mechanisms. I think the most significant part there is them saying that it learns the texture detail between the patches because the CNN model is only able to look at the image in sections at a time. So it's only looking at one chunk at a time. And that's one of the reasons why it's so efficient. But then this transformer block on top of it is able to look at all that information and clean up any inconsistencies that it finds between the patches of the CNN layer. So yeah, this gives global context, which in this context means previous frames and whole frames. The CNNs are still the base of the model and transformers are being used to enhance the output of the CNNs. So yeah, this paper talks about how this way you can get superior image quality with significantly reduced GPU memory usage compared to other architectures, such as a purely CNN-based or a purely transformer-based model, which is really important when you're playing a game and you're running in real time and it needs to be resource efficient. That last part about being efficient is really important for AMD's graphics cards, more so than it is for Nvidia's graphics cards or even Intel's. And that is because RDNA 3 and RDNA 4, they both have AI acceleration built in, but they did it in a really unique way. AMD did not implement AI specific cores or tensor cores as Nvidia calls them. Instead, what they did is they added special AI instructions to their existing compute units. And that works well because AMD's compute units are actually really powerful. And what they've done is implemented ways for compute units to work much, much more efficiently on AI tasks. I can make another video talking about how they improved the performance and made it so much faster for AI without actually introducing AI cores in another video, if people are interested. But for now, suffice it to say, AMD's strategy has been to reuse their existing architecture. It's been very similar to AMD's approach with their ray accelerators, which aren't distinct ray tracing cores. But anyway, yeah, that's a tangent. Suffice it to say, RDNA 3 and particularly RDNA 4 are a lot more efficient and a lot faster at processing AI models. And the compute units are the same cores that process games and graphics workloads. And so what that means is that when you're running an AI model, while you're playing a game like FSR4 will be, the processing that the AI model is doing is taking some performance away from your game because it's having to reuse some parts of the core that it would be using for games instead to process the AI workloads. So it's really 
critical. It's really important that your AI model is efficient enough to justify the performance it's going to be taking from the game. And like I said, NVIDIA, that's technically still a thing, but it's not nearly as much of a problem because they separate their AI processing from their game processing a lot more. And they do that by implementing tensor cores into their architecture, which are separate cores that are not inside of CUDA cores. So CUDA cores get to do their own thing while the AI cores get to work on DLSS, but AMD's cores have to do both. And realistically, AMD is probably doing this to save money on research and design and manufacturing costs, but it's really smart. It's really smart actually, and I think it's really cool. But yeah, overall, talking about those papers, talking about why it's important to balance speed with quality, and talking about how these hybrid architectures can help FSR4 maintain image sharpness compared to DLSS4, while still ensuring minimal impact on performance. So yeah, that's my prediction for FSR4. I decided I'm going to cover the other papers in a video in a few days, um, just because this video is already getting kind of long, and I want to publish this video tonight to get that info out there about FSR4 as soon as possible. But yeah, this other stuff's really interesting. I'm gonna finish, I already recorded a lot of this. I'm just gonna finish editing and explaining anything I need to explain about this other work. But yeah, subscribe to my channel to look out for my next video talking about neural supersampling and denoising the other DLSS ray reconstruction tech that AMD previewed. Because there's some really interesting stuff there. I mean, Intel even published a paper about ray reconstruction a year before, uh, before NVIDIA announced DLSS ray reconstruction. So Intel actually published this paper before NVIDIA, but NVIDIA also has a paper from 2017 that I read talking about ray reconstruction and denoising without using machine learning. So it's using traditional analytical hand-tuned algorithms. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Look out for that. Let me know any mistakes I might have made in the comments because I'm always learning, you know, and yeah, see you guys later. Peace.